What's up guys and welcome to chapter 9 operations management from the official study guide for the CCSP. Now in this video we're going to talk about the topics coming out of chapter 9 as well as the exam essentials that Ben wants you to know about as well as some of the review questions. So if you're studying for the CCSP or you're wondering what's in chapter 9, make sure you stay tuned to this video because we're about to go over it. All right, so the first exam essential is understand system monitoring in the cloud. Now, the essentials for that is understand hardware monitoring, network monitoring, as well as OS logging. Also understand what your maintenance strategy should look like. And what that means is the efforts that go into making sure operational cloud components are removed before putting the system into maintenance mode as well as a higher level of logging is required when conducting administrative activities and understand the risks and benefits involved in doing updates and upgrades as well as automated versus manual patching all that will be involved in your maintenance strategy also coming out of chapter 9 ben wants you to understand what configuration management is and he describes it as documenting the approved settings for systems and software, which helps establish baselines within the organization. Now, a part of that is understanding what change management is, and that's the process used to review, approve, and document any modifications in the environment. So things like establishing a full asset inventory, formalizing your baseline, logging any deviations, and how new assets are deployed in your environment. All that will be grouped together under your change management. Next, understand the importance of establishing your baseline of the network and systems. Who's involved in change management as far as your change management board? and understand what's involved in business continuity and disaster recovery. Uh, make sure you remember that the primary focus is always human safety. Understand what should be in a business continuity plan. For example, a list of items from your asset inventory that are categorized as critical. Your primary points of contact detailed actions and tasks that are needed to be taken such as checklists and also know the different types of business continuity and disaster recovery testing now your tests can include tabletop testing dry runs as well as full tests make sure you have a good understanding of these definitions as well as understand terms such as your RTO or your recovery time objective and what that is is your disaster recovery goal for recovery of operational capability and keep in mind that your RTO must be less than your maximum allowable downtime and that's how long it'll take for an interruption in service to pretty much destroy a company also know the term recovery point objective and that pretty much is the measurement of the maximum tolerable amount of data to lose and how much time can occur between your last data backup and a disaster. And understand your annual loss expectancy. And that is the amount an organization should expect to lose on an annual basis. And that's calculated by your ARO times your single loss expectancy. Now these terms should look familiar because they are covered in depth in the CISSP, but if you need to go over them, they are in chapter nine for you to review. So with that, let's jump into some of the review questions coming out of chapter nine. Question one, which form of disaster recovery testing has the most impact on operations? Is it A, tabletop, B, dry run, C, full test, or D, critical test? If you said C, full test, you would be correct. Question two, how often should a CMB meet? A, 
whenever regulations dictate, B, every week, C, semi-annually, or D, often enough to address the company's needs. If you said D, often enough to address the company's needs, you would be correct. Question three, a UPS should have enough power to last how long? A, six hours, B, 12 hours, C, one day, or D, long enough for a graceful shutdown. Now, if you said D, long enough for a graceful shutdown, you would be correct. All right, question four. Which characteristic of automated patching makes it attractive? Is it A, the cost? B, the speed? C, noise reduction? Or D, it's capable of recognizing problems quickly? Now, if you said B, speed, you would be correct. Question five. The CMB should include representatives from all the following offices except for a. Regulators B. IT Department C. Security Office or D. Management If you said A. Regulators, you would be correct because they should not be a part of your change management board. Question 6. Which form of disaster recovery testing has the least impact on operations? Is it A. Tabletop B. Dry runs C. Full tests or D, structured tests? If you said A, tabletop, you would be correct. Question seven. A localized incident or disaster can be addressed in a cost-effective manner by using which of the following? A, UPS. B, generators. C, joint operating agreements. Or D, strict adherence to applicable regulations. If you said C, joint operating agreements, you would be correct. Question eight, deviations from the baseline should be investigated and A, documented, B, enforced, C, revealed, or D, encouraged. If you said A, documented, you would be correct. Question nine, maintenance mode requires all of these actions except for A, remove all active production instances, B, initiate enhanced security controls, C, prevent new logins, or D, ensure logging continues. Now, if you said B, initiate enhanced security controls, you would be correct. And finally, question 10. What is one of the reasons a baseline might be changed? Is it A, because of numerous change requests? B, power inflections? C, to reduce redundancy? Or D, because of natural disasters? If you said A, numerous change requests, you would be correct. And that does it for the overview of the exam essentials and review questions for chapter nine operations management. Thanks for watching and check out the description for links on Ben Maliso and how to get the official study guide. And stay tuned for chapter 10, legal and compliance part one, exam essentials and review questions.